What is China going to do with Afghanistan? Well, China kind of just got a new province. Or did it? How much you want to bet that <laughs> China is going to find an ancient map of how they once controlled Afghanistan and how it legitimately belongs to them anyway? And jokes aside, you all know by now that the USA has left Afghanistan. A lot of you may have been surprised at how quickly the Taliban was able to take Kabul and control the entire central government. Trillions of dollars and 20 years later, what were we left with? Well, if the original goal was to remove Al-Qaeda, then yes, the USA did its job. If the USA's goal was to create a bustling democracy and a non-unified nation of tribes, then damn, was it a failure. Some of you may have been devastated at the images of families chasing the US planes to plead for asylum to be taken away for fear of their lives. Others may have had a chuckle at Taliban soldiers discovering gym equipment for the first time. To be fair, fighting an eternal war is probably enough exercise, but anyway, I digress. The point is, the USA is gone and the Taliban is in power. So where does that leave China? Certainly there's a massive power vacuum in what was once a kind of an American sphere of influence in the region. If you guessed China would stay out of it, because the CCP always claims that they never interfere with international disputes or territorial claims or matters in general, then you'd be dead wrong. Nope. China wants this. China needs this. And they're gonna go all in. You may be shocked or maybe not, to learn that they've kind of been planning this all along. In fact, China's been meeting with the Taliban for a while now. The images of China's foreign ministry meeting with the Taliban are forever burned into my mind. I remember thinking, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> then I realized that we're talking about a country, China, that has literal concentration camps for its Muslim minorities. So yeah, morality isn't really a priority here. Turns out, a strategic alliance with the Taliban is something that works out definitely in China's favor. China committing cultural genocide and throwing millions of its Uyghur Muslim population into camps has created a bit of anger and unrest in the region. Go figure, huh? Yes, they operate a full-on black mirror police state where you have to register a cooking knife and get thrown into prison for terrorism if you access Facebook. But still, the animosity is real. And so is China's fear that it's going to push the Uyghur minority population into terrorism and retaliation against the Chinese state. You see, China shares a small border with Afghanistan, and they're very paranoid that a force of Uyghurs trained right over the border could cause serious harm to the region. So what better ally to have on the border, you know, with China and Afghanistan, than a corrupt and battle-hardened regime like the Taliban? Sounds weird, I know, but China has a pretty long track record with supporting brutal regimes with horrid human rights records. You'd think a fundamentalist Muslim regime like the Taliban would be sympathetic to the Muslim Uyghur population currently being persecuted in China, and maybe that's the case. But what is much more important to them is the sheer amount of money and control that China can give them. Imagine an unparalleled surveillance state weapons, tech, and an endless supply of cash to further your ultimate goal of control. Because that's what China will give you if you're willing to do their bidding. And in this case, China's only bidding is really to sell some resources and allow the Belt and Road Initiative through and to make sure that Uyghurs don't get out of China and be trained to fight the CCP. This is an absolute dream come true for the Taliban and here's where my predictions come into play. China's not going to get into a war like the Soviet Union or the USA with Afghanistan just yet. I know that Westerners, you know, like China watchers and warmongers are frothing at the mouth with a fantasy that China gets embroiled into a 20 plus year war trying to win the unwinnable in Afghanistan, potentially destabilizing the CCP and using up all their money. But China's goal is fundamentally different. China is using this as an opportunity to defeat the USA in both optics first and in influence second. Look at the propaganda they're already putting out. This is Chinese state media outlet Global Times. From what happened in Afghanistan, those in Taiwan should perceive that once a war breaks out in the Straits, 
the island's defense will collapse in hours and U.S. military won't come to help. As a result, the DPP, which is the current political party leading Taiwan, will quickly surrender. You know, I read The Art of War in college, and I guess I missed the part that says, show all of your cards to the enemy on Twitter. By the way, China, take notes. I get countless messages from Americans that were less informed on China stuff, and they were very upset by the statement. The general sentiment being, yeah, look, we probably won't help Taiwan. Oh no, we're so weak. It worked, CCP. Your soft power kind of had an effect. Now let me tell you why this isn't reality and simply soft power and why you shouldn't be duped or demoralized by Chinese propaganda. Left and right, China is using this as a soft power to show the absolute failure of the USA and how its approach is very different from the war hawk Westerners. China will invest, build, and make friends instead of judge and paint other regimes in a bad light. You see, the glorification of the Taliban has already begun in China. And mark my words, you will start to see the Western CCP sycophants, you know, those guys on YouTube that will do anything for the CCP. You'll see them start to paint the Taliban in a good light as well. You heard it here first. This also kind of sets up a time buffer for not invading Taiwan. You see, China has threatened a Taiwan invasion so many times, but still has yet to act on it. It is truly an ambition of the CCP to invade Taiwan, but they know how unrealistic it is. Go watch my video on whether or not China will invade Taiwan if you want to know more. But the long story short is that when China promises to, to its citizens hundreds of times that it's going to rightfully take back the island of Taiwan, an island that belongs to China, despite it being a free and independent country, the people start to ask questions. They say, hey, well, Chinese government, Xi Jinping, why haven't we taken back Taiwan? You keep telling us that we're going to and it's rightfully ours. Well, the long and short of it is it would be a devastating and bloody loss for China if they tried since the USA has an agreement to protect Taiwan in case of a Chinese invasion. But this convenient failure in Afghanistan for the US just now means that China can use soft power to lower morale in Taiwan and in the West by saying, look, this is how America abandons its friends. The imagery of Afghans running after that plane and begging to be rescued while the USA selfishly evacuates. This is exactly what China wants. This buys them time to say, ha ha, look, Taiwan is doomed and we will invade. Someday. It's a proverbial bone to throw at the Chinese populace that they keep stoking with xenophobia and nationalism. The second goal of China here is building a sphere of influence. There's a joke uh, amongst Chinese netizens that I was told by a friend, and that's that the allies of China are getting stronger and stronger. Look at all the allies that China actually has. We have North Korea, and now we have the Taliban. Who's China's next ally gonna be? Captain Hook from Somalia? In all seriousness though, China does have an ever-growing sphere of influence. I mean, look at the allegations currently in Dubai of black site prisons that are imprisoning Chinese people on behalf of China in Dubai. I mean, that's really crazy if you think about it. Anyway, the difference between the China and the USA here is that the USA has to abide by certain international standards. When they make a mistake, you better believe that you know about it. Civilian deaths, refugee camps, intelligence and military errors, it's always covered by the media ravenously, as it should be. But China gets to play a different game. They can control the narrative. They can censor anything. Nothing gets past the Chinese government. And they love despotic powers. They love tyrannical dictatorships. They love corruptible regimes because they can pull the strings in the background without having to do much, save for throwing money their way. They do it with North Korea and they'll do it with the Taliban. You see, the Taliban can fight dirty. And China likes that because they have the potential to use underhanded means to pursue unity in the tribal nation of Afghanistan. I'm telling you, China won't care if the Taliban uses chemical weapons, genocide, and violent coercion to stabilize the country enough for enterprises like, you know, natural resource gathering or infrastructure projects that benefit China. 
In fact, China is more likely to fund these underhanded means if it means that it can get what it wants. It's really a win-win for China and the Taliban. The Taliban gets ultimate control and China gets influence in the area and resources that it so desperately needs. Short term, China's kind of won this one. Actually, it really has won this one. However, this is very short term. Let me tell you what I think will happen long term. Here's a very basic timeline of how I think things will go when basic order has been established and the friendly facade is over. First, I think the CCP will try to extend the Belt and Road Initiative into Afghanistan, whether it's through infrastructure projects or all kinds of promises that tend to fall through in other nations that it's tried this on. And Afghanistan will fall into debt with China, just like we see with Sri Lanka having to give up a port to China because it couldn't pay them back. The CCP will use the debt to increase its control over Afghanistan, as we see them do in other countries. But Afghanistan, being an Islamic theocracy, doesn't like being controlled by China. Now, after they've already gotten the infrastructure projects and money, they will come to the conclusion that, hey, China's actually an official atheist state. Not too pumped about that. And Islamic revolutionaries will start to target and attack trade traveling through Afghanistan on freeways and the railroads that China has built as part of their Belt and Road Initiative. And then in the end, I think there will be a new war in Afghanistan as China tries to protect its trade. And that's long term. I often make the claim that China doesn't actually play the long game. This is a gross misconception that Westerners typically have that China's playing 4D chess and that they're playing some sort of massively long game. No, the CCP or the Chinese government, they play a very short game in order to fulfill immediate needs that are required for the CCP to stay in power. Because that is literally the ultimate goal of China. It's not the success of its people or international trade or global friendships, but actually the eternal power of its regime and the people in power. It's laughable that the Chinese government can label the West as an imperialist bully when they are clearly the biggest imperialist on the planet as of now. If you cannot see this yet, I suggest you put down the fake Kool-Aid and see things for how they really are. China is now an expansionist power and they're not going to pretend to act nicely anymore. Just watch.